So there's three main problems you can get in ICC. Perhaps you might have no signal at all in your sample. You might have high background with lots of fluorescence. Or you may perhaps have an incorrect signal. So you've got in your cell, but it's not at the localization that you're expecting. What can we do about these? So if you have no signal, this indicates to start with a need to optimize the protocol. You might have a defective antibody, or there may be a lack of target in the sample. And you could check that with a literature search to see how much target should be there. So the types of things that we would recommend are to increase the antibody concentration, and to make sure you incubate overnight at 4 degrees. So increasing that concentration should mean that you increase the amount of staining there. Remember to permeabilize if it's a cytoplasmic or nuclear protein. Don't let the cells dry out during the antibody staining. Uh, this can give patchy staining, so some areas might have no staining, whereas other areas have too much staining. Make sure you've had the correct culture conditions of the cells for expression of the protein, and again, you can check the literature for this. It's always good to include a known endogenous positive control, and this, again, will indicate if your procedure is working well. Ensure the correct secondary antibody is being used, and ask yourself if it's working well with other primary antibodies, just to make sure it's working well for you. So we move on to high background. So if you have high background, it's usually from excess of antibody or autofluorescence, maybe, or from non-specific binding. So for this, you need to do the opposite in a way. So you need to reduce the antibody concentration. Make sure you're incubating overnight at four degrees. Ensure that you're including wash steps. Wash three to four times for five minutes at each wash step. And make sure you include a mild detergent like 0.2% between in the wash buffer and antibody dilution buffer. Again, you want to check that you have the correct culture conditions and that the cells were not overconfluent. Ensure there's permeabilization if it's cytoplasmic or nuclear target. That sounds quite counterintuitive, but I have found from my own experience and experience of our customers that if permeabilization isn't done when it's required, perhaps for a nuclear target, for example, that you don't get no staining. You may actually get a lot of excess staining for some reason. So just make sure you permeabilize if you need to. Again, you could check the secondary antibody, make sure that's not binding non-specifically by including a no primary control. Sometimes aggregates of the conjugated secondary antibody can give a sort of speckled appearance within the, within the sample. So you can mix the antibody well before you use. If you want to, you could even filter the antibody solution before you use it if necessary. Some cells are quite autofluorescent. You may want to check the literature for this. But they may also be autofluorescent only at a certain wavelength. So if you choose a different conjugate and view it at a different wavelength, you may find that you correct that problem. Some cell culture matrix components and proteins, again, can be quite autofluorescent. And again, perhaps you could change the conjugate that you're using to view at a different wavelength. And the next problem is if you have an incorrect signal. And this really is the most difficult one to troubleshoot, because usually it shows a lack of specificity for the protein of interest. Um, it can't always be solved by protocol modifications. However, there are some things that you can consider. You can ensure that permeabilization, if it's a cytoplasmic or nuclear target, you can check the literature for further, further details on the localization in that particular cell type you're using. Check if the culture, con culture conditions are correct for the expression and, that the, and for the correct localization of the protein. Are any other special conditions required? Check the secondary antibody again with a no primary control just to make sure that's not binding non-specifically. If you want to take it a step further, you could check your sample with a Western blot and check that the band observed is at the correct size for your protein. The last piece of troubleshooting I wanted to look at was considerations for recombinant protein detection. Many of our customers are actually detecting recombinant proteins 
And there are some inherent difficulties with detection of recombinant proteins that are worth considering before you start your experiments. It's good to confirm if the protein that you transfect is actually full length and to make sure it includes the immunogen sequence. And if you're not sure of this, if you're perhaps not sure of the immunogen sequence, then you can contact our scientific support team and we'll be able to help you with that. You can contact us at technical at abcam.com. Also, many recombinant proteins are tagged. Sometimes a tag can prevent the access of the antibody to the epitope. So we would recommend to place a tag on the C or N terminus just to avoid disruption of epitopes as much as possible. You may want to assess the stability of transfection by other methods, for example, by RT-PCR. You may find that your transfection method requires more optimization, so it's worth going through that again. And it's very important to include an endogenous positive control sample and an endogenous negative control. Um, that really will show you whether it's the transfection that's the problem. And if you want examples of positive and negative controls, you can have a look at individual antibody data sheets for some examples.